So towing weights are really complicated and there's a lot of limits that you've got to stay within. The one we're going to talk about today is the rear axle load limit, which is the maximum amount of load you can put on the rear axle of your tow car. And I'm going to explain the effect of tow ball mass on the load of the rear axle and how close it can get to its limit, if not over. So the first thing we're going to do is establish the weight of the tow ball mass and of the front and rear of the tow car without them being connected. So for that, I'm going to take my little measuring apparatus, put it here. I'm going to tear it so that the scales read zero, even with that weight on there. I'm just going to let that drop down. And we see that comes out to about 350 grams. I'll call that uh, 350 grams as our tow ball mass on the trailer. Now what I'm going to do is measure the front and rear axle loads on the model. So I've just um, set the, uh, turned the scales on and set them to zero. And now on goes the Defender and we can measure the front and rear axle loads as well. Okay so the weights we've got at the back of the Defender is uh, 1814 and at the front we have a weight of 1712 and we know that this is got a 350 gram tow ball mass. Now what we're going to do is put that on like that and you can see that the back of the defender has been pulled down. So we've clearly got an extra force there. But what we see is that the scales are now reading 2347. And that is an increase of 530 grams or so over what we had before. And the scales at the front are now reading round about 1529. So there's been a loss of 183, 180 grams or so at the front. So what's happened is that the 350 grams we've got here pushes down more than 350 on the rear axle, but it actually reduces load on the front axle. And that is why rear axle loads are so critically important. The approximate calculation is for every kilogram of tow ball mass you've got, you're going to put about one and a half kilograms worth of load on the rear axle and take the equivalent amount off the front axle. Now, this holds true pretty much for single axle trailers, which is why I've removed the um, two wheels from this trailer over here. For twin axle trailers, they tend to behave slightly differently and we'll cover that now. So we're going to go through the effect of tow ball height on tow ball mass. We're going to start off at the height the defender would normally tow it and you can see that's about 400 grams. And the trailer at the moment is in its configuration with twin axles. Now I'm going to lower the tow ball mass, the tow ball height rider, and you can see as I lower it with, it with the twin, it decreases. It's now about 250 grams. And now if I make that taller or higher, then you can see it's gone up from 400 to about 574. Now what I'm going to do now is put it back to the original normal height, and I'm going to take the rear wheels off and place them in line with the axle here and as I do that you can see that the tow ball pretty much balances now. So at the normal height it's now about um, 16 but I'm going to just move this further forwards to get back a tow ball mass of 400. Okay, so that's now a tow ball mass of around about um, 400. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it down and let's see what difference that makes. And as you can see, it's gone up from about 415 to 437. Now this time I'm going to raise it and you can see it's actually decreased. It's, it's now gone back to um, under 400 and just for reference, there's the normal height there of 414. So you can see that by raising it, then the tow ball mass actually decreases as you raise it with a single axle. When you lower it with a single axle, then 
um, it actually increases, which is the opposite to what we found with the twin axle configuration. So why is there a difference with tow ball height compared to a single axle trailer versus a tandem axle? Well, this is why. Tandem axle at the moment, if I lift it up like this and I start to raise it, what happens is that at the moment, the weight is taken by all four wheels, but as I raise it up, then weight comes off the front wheels here and they're now in the air. So of course it's gonna get heavier as I lift it up and we're also pivoting on the back axle. Conversely, if I push down, then what happens here is that we're now pivoting around the front axle so there's less weight over the front, but also the rear wheels start to lose weight here and then they start to actually counterbalance. Whereas with a single axle trailer, the opposite happens. So the moral of the story is you've got to be really careful about the height of your tow ball when you measure the tow ball mass and make sure that's accurate for your vehicle traveling height. Now what this also means is that there is no absolutely perfect formula to calculate the effect on your rear axle and front axle from the tow ball mass. Um, I have and will give guidance in this video, but the only sure way to do it is to get your vehicle loaded with all the things you'd normally take and tow, then get it professionally weighed by one of the many uh, caravan weighing services you find in Australia. Okay, so what we're going to do now is work through some examples using a popular tow vehicle, the Land Cruiser 200 series. And that has a GVM of 3350 kilograms in the later models, and that is the maximum the vehicle is allowed to weigh. Um, the unladen mass is around 2740 kilograms, which gives us a payload of around 610. But what's important is the fact that as well as the GVM, which is how much the vehicle can weigh in total, there's also a maximum limit limit on the front axle of 1630 and a maximum limit on the rear axle of 1950. So you can't exceed that limit or that limit or this limit, whichever comes first is, is the one which you've got to work with. Okay, so we've got our limit here and we've got our limit here. Now, if we take our unladen mass and we're going to assume a 50-50 front and rear split. Now, the only way you can know this for certain is to go and put your vehicle on a weigh bridge, but we'll work with 50-50 because that's about right for a stock vehicle. That gives us 13-20 kilograms per axle, which I'm going to represent with these purple arrows here, which are in proportion to the red arrows. And then uh, 1630 minus 1320, that gives us 310 kilograms we can put over the front axle. And the same for the back, that gives us 630 kilograms we can go over the back axle. But remember, uh, you still can't exceed the GVM in total. All right, so let's look at how we calculate that extra load percentage. So the first thing you've got to do is look at the wheelbase. This information is readily available in your owner's handbook or website, and that is the distance from the center of the front wheel to the center of the back wheel. The next thing you have to look at is the overhang, which is the distance from the center of the back wheel here to the tow ball there, and that will typically be around about 12, 1300 millimeters, maybe a bit more for some four wheel drives. You then divide one by the other, gives us 0.42, which means that's 142%. That's the figure we've got to work with. Okay, so what that means is that for every kilogram over here, we increase that figure by 142% on the rear axle, and then there's a um, proportional decrease on the front axle. Okay, so let's work through that with a 300 kilogram tow ball mass, which we're pushing down here. So there's our purple representing the unladen weight of the vehicle. So 300 kilograms times 1.42 equals 426. So that's how much weight is pushing down on the rear axle um, over here. And so 1320, which is the base weight, plus the 46, we've now got 1746 kilograms pushing down on the rear axle, which I'm going to represent with this arrow here. At the front axle, we are reducing the weight on the front axle by 126, um, and that's represented by that brown arrow there. So the summary is our 300 kilogram tow ball mass in, means an increase of 426 on the rear axle and a decrease of 126 on the front axle. Now those are approximately a bunch of things which um, change that, but the principle will remain the same.
Now here's some factors which affect the ratio of your table mass to how much rear axle load it's going to translate to. So the first one is obviously the table mass. The more table mass you have, the greater downforce you're going to have on the rear axle. Um, the wheelbase to overhang ratio, a very long wheelbase is great, a very short wheelbase is good. The worse, um, uh, the, the reverse is obviously worse. Um, whether it's a tandem or single axle, and whether the ground is level, that does make a big difference. Do your weighing on an absolutely flat and level surface. The height of the tow ball when it's hitched um, and how much the suspension drops down. So there's a bunch of factors here. What you've got to do is get your vehicle set up exactly as you would ready to tow and then get it professionally weighed or take it to a weigh bridge and, and do it yourself. So a six point summary to finish then. One is there is a rear axle load limit. It's a front axle as well, but typically the rear axle is important and you have to find it out and, and not exceed it. Secondly, adding table mass will increase the rear axle load beyond what the table mass is. That's not in question. What's, the only question is how much extra that percentage is. The rear, and for a rough figure, you can use 1.5 times. That should give you a little bit of a safety margin. Um, there's a lot of factors that affect it. So say again, just do your weighing or use a pro weighing service. Um, tandems behave differently to single axles. When you raise and lower the right height, that's got a different effect on table mass. And finally, I've got a calculator where a lot of this stuff has been worked out already. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.